Hey kids, Mr. Fry here, hope you're well, and uh, welcome aboard the Suzuki GSX S1000. Here today in Little Missenden for a change, which is a beautiful little uh, village just on from Great Missenden. As you can see, classic English place. In the summer, particularly lovely, not so nice on a damp January Sunday morning. Anyway, I digress. So this is the last ride that I'm going to be having on the uh, GSX S1000. Suzuki are coming tomorrow to pick the bike up. So I thought it would be a good chance to uh, go through the kind of lessons I've learned since I've been riding this bike. So uh, stick around, stay tuned. If you're interested in the GSX S1000, this video is for you. Okay, so the GSX S1000 then, a bike I've been riding for the last week. Now normally when you get these press loan bikes, you get them for a couple of weeks. Uh, but this one is in great demand, it being a new bike, so I've only had it for a week, so it means I haven't ridden it quite as much as I would have liked to, so I haven't been able to bring you my normal sort of in-depth review that I would do at the end of a loan period, but I have been riding it as my daily rider for a week, so I've got to know quite a bit about the bike, got to understand its quirks, and in this video I'm going to bring you the five things I love about the bike, and five things that I'm not so keen on, so uh, let's get the negatives out of the way first, shall we? The first thing I don't like about the bike is the uh, LCD display on here. It just, I mean, it's a new bike. This is, uh, it's 2022, I'm recording this in January. The bike came out in 2021 as a new bike for that model year. But look at this LCD display. It looks like something out of the 1990s. This day and age, if you're gonna have a digital display, have a TFT one. It's got everything you want on there, including things like gear position indicator, fuel gauge. So I, I, no complaints about the stuff that it actually contains, but uh, just I just think it looks a bit naff. So black mark there. All right, next thing that I'm not too keen on on this bike, it has got a lovely smooth engine, but at certain speeds, there are a few vibes through the seat. So here I am, I'm doing 60 miles an hour on this bit of dual carriageway and I'm in uh, fifth gear and there's just, there's just a few little vibes in there now it's not a massive concern I am being picky this list by the way of things that I love and don't like about the bike it's not in any particular order so the vibes aren't enough to put me off buying the bike to be fair but they're just there which surprised me a bit for a four cylinder bike maybe I'm becoming hypersensitive because I normally ride a Honda Goldwing which is a six cylinder bike and it's super smooth so yeah I'm being picky, but there are a few vibes at certain speeds on the bike. Just something to be aware of. Next up on the list, number three of the things I don't like about the bike, it's just the bizarre plastics on it. They've put some sort of textured plastics on the bike, which I thought was supposed to be sort of pretend camouflage, but uh, I put some pictures on my Instagram page. Oh, and by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm just called Missenden Flyer on there. That's where I'm most active on social media rather than YouTube. Do follow me there, that'd be great to have you along. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, I put a picture on Instagram of the bike and asked people what they thought about the camo plastics and it turns out actually it's supposed to be some sort of cracked carbon apparently. Anyway, whatever it is, I'm not sure that I like them. They're just, I mean the plastic, plastics on bikes kind of detract anyway, don't they? So I think they need to be sort of subtle. But by giving it that texture, it makes it stand out more. And that's something else I don't like about the bike. Again, purely uh, aesthetic, so it's not necessarily, you know, you might love it. And of course, all these things that I'm saying are just personal opinions, so if you disagree with me, please don't hate me. All right, number four on my list of things that I'm not so keen on on the bike, and this is something that actually is easily rectified, but the bike doesn't come with heated grips. Now, I know this bike is sold all over the world, and uh, not everywhere is as chilly as Blighty where this time of year your hands do get cold so I'm having to resort to using my heated gloves which is brilliant by the way but normally on a day like today where it's about 4 degrees centigrade I would have my heated gloves and heated grips on so I think if I uh, had one of these bikes I'd get myself some aftermarket heated grips quite pronto which don't cost an awful lot but it's the hassle of getting them fitted and stuff isn't it so uh, yeah, a bit of a thumbs down that no heated grips available on the bike as standard, and I'm not even sure they're available as an option. All right, and on to my final thing that I don't like about the bike then, and this, having said these are in no particular order, this definitely is the major downside of this bike as far as I'm concerned, because basically it's a lovely bike. But what I don't like about it, 
And again, entirely personal opinion, don't hate me for this, but I really don't like the looks of it, particularly the front end of it. Suzuki, to my mind, have sport a good bike by putting that plasticky headlight arrangement on. I'm sure they work very well, but uh, they just don't look very good to my mind. Let's go this way, follow the Jag. Always good to follow a Jag, especially a black one. So yeah, entirely, uh, once again, a personal opinion. You might love the looks of it. But for me, if it just had a round headlight, it would make the whole thing so much better. I personally prefer the look of uh, this bike's predecessor, well, sort of predecessor, the GSX S1000F. The one with the fairing, same engine, pretty much the same bike, but with the fairing on it. That bike, too, split opinions on its looks, but I loved it. I personally would rather have one of them, which is the older model, than one of these. Just on looks alone. Alright, enough whinging, because uh, as I intimated, this is actually a very good bike. Great value for money, for example. But, uh, what about the bike are the things that I particularly love? So I've come up with five of those as well. So these are the things I love about the bike, and again, not in any particular order. Alright, the first thing that I've got a note that I love about the bike, and this is seems a bit hypocritical of me because I've already said that I find there are a few vibes on the engine but what I must say is in the main this bike is beautifully smooth it's got the four cylinder engine in it and I'm always impressed by four cylinder engines how smooth they feel this of course has its origins in the old GSX R1000 the K5 version more about that in a second but for day to day riding in all sorts of conditions it's just super smooth Pulling away like this and going through traffic, normally if you're on, say, a twin, which bikes I know well, as I own, what, three of those? I think. Four, rather. <laughs> There's none of that sort of juddery thumpiness that you get on a twin cylinder machine. So you can negotiate traffic, lovely and smooth, so this would actually make an ideal commuter. But that's something I love about the bike. Next up, and just thinking about potentially riding this as a commuter bike, the next thing I love about this machine is how light and agile it feels. Which is great when you're giving it the beans around sweepy corners. But it's also great if you're in the urban environment, as I am here. I'm just, uh, I'm just between New Amersham and Chesham here. And it's quite busy for a Sunday, as you can see. Because it is such a low, uh, light and agile bike, if you're in traffic and you're stopping and starting or having a weave through or whatever, it makes that all very, very easy. And despite owning some very heavy bikes myself, whenever I get on a light bike, I just think lightness is where it's at for motorcycles. And this does feel light when you're riding it, so that's something I absolutely love about the GSX S1000. Something that's absolutely excellent about this bike is its pricing. You get quite a lot of bike for the money here, given it a sort of litre naked bike. It comes in at £10,999, which is a lot of money, of course. But compared to uh, other bikes in this class, that makes it good value. Other bikes in this class are things like the Yamaha MT10, BMW S1000R, stuff like that. I wouldn't put this in the class above of the sort of super nakeds, the Ducati Street Fighters of the world, because they're like almost double that. Well, they are double that. But in that sort of brotherhood, those sort of bikes, 10999 makes it uh, one of the cheaper choices. And you feel like you're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of value for money, so uh, that's something I love about the bike. Even on a Sunday, I get stuck behind a white van, it's incredible. Something that didn't make my list, but I'm going to add, because <laughs> it's going to become a top six, is the quick shifter on here, it's brilliant. It comes as standard up and down, and it never complains, it just works, it's so smooth. Even when the bike's not particularly under load, beautiful quick shifter on here. Right, I've a little opportunity to turn off here and head my way to a slightly faster road, hopefully. Can't believe how busy it is today. This is a Sunday lunchtime, would you believe it? Right, let's go this way and see if we can lose some traffic. Right, while I'm hunting out a slightly faster road, I must mention something else that I really love about this bike, and this one is really important to me really important not with any bike that I buy and that is the comfort this bike really is supremely comfortable the seat on it is nice and padded you know I've ridden this for a few hours and it's uh, I've never suffered any bum trauma on it which is always a nice thing 
the seating position itself is nice and comfy. You're nice and upright, doesn't do your back in, the handlebars are nice and wide. I've got dodgy shoulders and it doesn't hurt my shoulders. The suspension is, you know, fairly generous and it's quite soft setting. It doesn't jar your fillings. The airflow of the bike is nice and smooth. So you get my point. It's a comfortable place to be. You could ride this for hours on end. You'd have no problems at all. So that's something else on my list of loves on the GSXS 1000. All right, so to uh, number five on my list of the things I love about the bike, it might be number six now, actually. It's something I'm hoping I'll be able to demonstrate a little bit, not too mad in a moment, as I come up to these national speed limit signs. And that is this. Thanks to that uh, GSXR 1000 derived engine, this machine is really fast. As you can see, the roads are a little bit slippy today, so I don't want to be going nuts. But this bike really flies if you want it to. Properly nice on the corners too. Got a lovely sound to it. It is really a bit of a hooligan bike, as these nakeds tend to be. But yeah, that's the other thing I love about this bike, it's properly fast. Okay, so there we have it, folks. Those are kind of the lessons I've learned about the bike since I've had it for the last week. As I say, not quite as an in-depth review as I perhaps would have liked to have done if I'd had it for longer and maybe in the summer. But overall, the niggles really that I found with the bike are just that niggles. There's nothing really that really turns me off the bike other than its looks that I find a bit challenging. If Suzuki could just do something about that front end, that light, make it look a bit less unfinished, this would be just an excellent naked option. On the other hand, when you ride the bike, you're not looking at it, are you? And as a rider's bike, it's brilliant. And excellent value for money is the same. Huge thanks to Suzuki UK as ever for letting me borrow the bike. Huge thanks to you for watching. Huge thanks to my sponsors and to my patrons and to my channel members. Without you guys, all this stuff wouldn't be possible. And if this is the first time you've been to my channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button. I don't just do uh, test rides. Can I open my helmet? No, I can't open it. What the heck? I don't just do uh, test rides and bike reviews here on the Mission of Flyer, but I do uh, trips and tours, home and abroad when I'm allowed to. I do kit reviews. I do uh, bits and pieces about how to look after your bike in the garage. I do a monthly bike news feature. Basically, anything and everything, I try and cover it here on the Mission of Flyer. It'd be great to have you along. Right, see you next time. Till then, this has been the Mission of Flyer. Cheerio.